We are excited to present our paper, Who Audits the Auditors? Recommendations from a Field Scan of the Algorithmic Auditing Ecosystem to the FACT 2022 Conference. The published co-authors of this work are Sasha costanza Chak, Deb Raji, and Dr. Joy Bulamwini of the Algorithmic Justice League. We'd like to thank the many research collaborators and participants who made this project possible. Over the course of this presentation, we'll talk about algorithmic auditing, which we will refer to as AI auditing for short, what it is and why it matters. We'll share the methods we use to conduct the first comprehensive field scan of the AI auditing ecosystem, outline our key findings, including emerging best practices and common barriers for AI auditors, and we'll close with a set of policy recommendations to improve the quality and impact of AI auditing. First, it's important to understand what AI auditing is and why it matters. Algorithmic decision systems can propagate intersecting forms of discrimination and cause real-world harm. For example, such systems have been used to wrongfully deny welfare benefits, kidney transplants, and mortgages to individuals of color as compared to their white counterparts, and have contributed to wrongful arrests due to biases in facial recognition technologies, among many other documented instances of harm. Many have called for audits as one potential method to improve algorithmic accountability. What is AI auditing? We use the term AI auditing here to refer to a process through which an automated decision system or algorithmic product, tool, or platform is evaluated. In theory, AI auditing can help identify whether systems meet expectations in areas such as regulatory compliance, transparency, bias and harm, energy use, labor practices, data consent, and more. However, without widely used standards, regulatory guidance, or shared understanding of audit practices, claims that an AI system has been audited are difficult to verify. What does the AI auditing ecosystem look like? Well, first-party audits conducted by internal teams are now common at large tech companies, such as Facebook's responsible AI team or Twitter's meta team. In theory, first-party auditors have high levels of access to the systems they assess and are well positioned to ensure that problems they encounter are addressed. However, First-party audit results are rarely disclosed to the public, and there's little transparency about whether or not their recommendations are ever implemented. Second-party audits, conducted by consultants such as O'Neill Risk Consulting and Algorithmic Auditing, or ORCA, or by teams within larger companies like Google, are also becoming more common. But there are concerns about whether these auditors are incentivized properly to promote accountability, as well as whether they can disclose their audit results. Third-party audits, conducted by fully independent entities with no obligation to the audit target, such as journalists like The Markup, advocates like Upturn, or public agencies like the FTC, may or may not have access to target systems. Third-party auditors often disclose findings, though, and they've already helped raise public awareness of algorithmic harms. How about auditing regulation? Well, policymakers have begun to introduce, and in some cases pass, legislation to require AI audits. For example, New York City now requires mandatory third-party audits of AI hiring systems. Overall, however, there are few widely adopted laws or standards for conducting AI audits. Next, we'll summarize our methods and limitations. We interviewed and surveyed industry leaders to address five key research questions. What methods and tools are practitioners currently using to audit AI systems? What are the emerging standards and best practices? What are some of the biggest barriers to effective AI auditing? Do practitioners currently investigate potential and real harm across the AI lifecycle? And do practitioners specifically pay attention to harm incident reporting for deployed systems? To address our questions, we conducted a field scan that yielded a list of 438 individuals from 189 organizations that we identified as involved to some degree in AI auditing. This list included first, second, and third party auditors, as well as members of civil society organizations, academic researchers, and regulators involved with AI audit policies. From this list, we identified 10 leaders in the field for semi-structured interviews. Based on our understanding of the field and lessons from our interviews, we then developed a survey that we shared with contacts at all 189 organizations identified in the field scan. Overall, we received 152 individual survey responses. 
Several factors potentially limit the accuracy and generalizability of our findings. First, our respondents may not be representative of the entire population of AI auditors. 56 survey respondents self-identified as having worked directly on audits themselves. Additionally, our survey responses came primarily from the US, UK, and EU. This reflects deep global inequality in the AI audit ecosystem. You can learn more about our limitations in the appendices of the paper. The auditors we interviewed and surveyed had collective experience assessing algorithmic systems in industries including technology and social media, hiring and HR, consumer goods, and insurance and credit, as well as for state and local governments. So what did we find? The AI auditors we surveyed were more likely to report engaging in quantitative audit methods than critical, structural, or qualitative ones. For example, over 70% of respondents said that they use quantitative checks, including checking whether training data is appropriate for modeling, assessing data representativeness, assessing bias in input data, and measuring accuracy of the AI system on individual subgroups. R1, an internal audit lead at a social media company, put it this way, quote, any good AI audit has to have some sort of measurable code-based aspect to it. Less than 40% of respondents said they engage in more qualitative or structural checks, such as assessing the robustness of the AI system to adversarial use, training auditees' employees on identifying biases and harm, examining team diversity, or assessing whistleblower protection mechanisms. Most practitioners indicate that their auditing frameworks and tools are custom-built, and often tailored to particular use cases. Just 7% say their audit process uses a standardized framework and set of tools. 38% of respondents say they do not use any pre-built AI audit tools, such as IBM AI Fairness 360, Scikit Fairness, or Parity. 74% of auditors self-report that they assess fairness across legally protected demographic categories, as well as other categories of interest. 65% of auditors claim they conduct intersectional as opposed to single-axis fairness assessments. However, almost none were able to provide evidence of this. Some auditors describe challenges with intersectional audits, including issues with data collection and sample size, as well as limitations in the law. Most auditors do not publicly share results or documentation of their audits. As interviewee Kathy O'Neill, CEO of Orca, put it, quote, I can't demand disclosure. Clients simply won't hire me. Of the 43 auditors we asked to share a link to their audit process, only seven provided a link to any documentation, and only four linked to audit results. Multiple respondents said they could not share due to client confidentiality agreements. However, 82% of auditors believe that public disclosure of audit results, or at least some degree of documentation, should be legally mandated. The auditors we interviewed and surveyed overwhelmingly describe AI audit regulation as, quote, not present or barely present. This is generally consistent across geographies, although regulation in the US is considered less developed than in Europe. Interviewee Meredith Whitaker, at the time faculty director at AI Now, said, quote, AI auditing isn't really a thing at this point. By and large, that's an aspirational category. Additionally, 89% of auditors we surveyed strongly or somewhat agree that companies do not take action on ethical AI issues unless they face public pressure. Our interviewees agreed. For example, R4, an internal audit lead at a tech company, stated, quote, the best way to make sure that an issue is attended to is to have the press report on it. We asked 152 survey respondents to rank 13 potential regulatory interventions from highest to lowest importance. By a clear consensus, the top regulatory priority was legislation requiring AI audits. Although respondents agree that regulation is necessary, they disagree on the details. For example, of the 95% of survey respondents who believe that audits should be mandated, 53% support mandates for high stakes systems only while 42% support mandates for all AI systems. Similarly, of the 82% of respondents who believe that disclosure of audit results should be mandated, half say that disclosure should include only a readout of key metrics, while the other half believe that the full audit code, methodology, and outcomes should be released. Respondents are also almost perfectly split between those who say future regulation should explicitly define what AI audits entail 
and those who say regulation should provide standards and guidelines, but not specific definitions. We found two primary barriers to effective AI auditing. First, study participants identified an overall lack of auditee buy-in as one of the largest barriers, with several attributing the lack of buy-in to beliefs by auditees that performing audits could expose them to legal liability. Second, participants identified the overall cost of conducting an audit as a major barrier. Of the 46 auditors who answered the question, quote, which of the following best describes your approach to AI bias and harm incident reporting, 35% say that they are either not familiar with bias and harm incident reporting or that it's not part of their process. A further 30% of survey respondents say that while they do consider reports of real-world harm, it's not a critical part of their process. As R3, internal audit lead at a technology company, put it, quote, there really does need to be some sort of standard place to report algorithmic harms. We're not there yet. We're still scrappy, searching for what people say, and really relying on activists to be active. When asked about their approach to stakeholder involvement in AI audits, 41% of respondents said that, quote, involving those who are most at risk of harm is critical. However, only two respondents provided links to audit methodologies with evidence of stakeholder involvement. We'll conclude by outlining six policy recommendations to enable more effective and impactful auditing practices. We focus in particular on areas of emerging consensus among auditors, although we also highlight several areas of ongoing debate. First, both owners and operators of AI systems should be required to engage in independent audits against clearly defined standards. There's a clear need for this. Respondents see legislation to require companies to engage in AI auditing as the most important regulatory requirement, and they see lack of buy-in from auditees as the biggest barrier. However, debate remains about how to best ensure that audits are impactful and are neither too narrowly nor too loosely defined. Second, individuals should be notified when they are subject to algorithmic decision-making. Notification is a first step that enables individuals to request additional information about, and potentially contest, automated decisions. Third, disclosure of key components of audit findings for peer review should be mandated. While most AI auditors we surveyed view disclosure as necessary, most do not themselves disclose audit methods or findings. While this is a high priority, we recognize that the mandated degree of disclosure must be carefully considered against IP and privacy interests, and may benefit from domain-specific legislation. Fourth, auditors should consider real-world harm in their audit processes, including through standardized harm incident reporting and response mechanisms. Many auditors we surveyed said their organization or their client's organization have systems in place for users to report experiences of harm, but they also believe these systems are ineffective or ad hoc. Fifth, auditors should prioritize stakeholder involvement by affected communities. Currently, less than half of auditors said that stakeholder involvement was a critical part of their audit process. Stakeholder involvement can be expensive and challenging to execute, but solutions then can be informed by the existing field of participatory design and by the growing community of design justice practitioners. Sixth, there should be formalized evaluation processes and potentially accreditation of AI auditors. Of the auditors we surveyed, formal accreditation was not particularly popular. Many had concerns that accreditation would become a rubber stamp process that could lock out independent researchers, civil society organizations, investigative journalists, and community advocacy organizations. But simultaneously, some auditors expressed concerns that AI auditing is not rigorous enough. Accreditation of AI auditing could be organized by a professional organization, a public agency, and or international or local standard setting and accreditation bodies. Ultimately, we hope that emerging regulatory regimes will take our findings about the expressed desires of AI auditors into account. But most crucially, that the focus will be on the needs of the X-coded, those individuals and communities that risk present and future harm from the use of algorithmic tools, products, and systems. Thank you. We invite you to read the full paper at auditors.ajl.org.